you're too young to give life advice. I've received that comment in various forms and iterations throughout my YouTube journey. And although it's never really phased me, it's always intrigued me. It's always intrigued me how people can develop such a strong belief in the correlation between your physical age, your biological age, and the insights that you have to provide to people. Now, why am I even making this video? Generally speaking, when I have doubters, detractors, or haters, or skeptics, I tend to either ignore them or just show them positivity. But the reason why I'm making this video is not to discredit those people or defend my own honor, but rather it's because I believe that there are a lot of young people out there who have insights to share, okay, people who are content creators, life coaches, so on and so forth, and don't even know it yet because they believe that their age is a limiting factor when in many ways it's actually a strength. Now, it's my belief that many people hold this paradigm because they're not aware that there are two different types of wisdom. And that's really what I wanna talk about in this video. I wanna share the two different types of wisdom that a lot of people are simply blind to. Right now, that being said, the first type of wisdom is the wisdom that you gain with experience. Now, generally speaking, when I receive these comments saying that I'm too young to be giving life advice, people are probably viewing wisdom through this framework and this framework alone. And it's not so much that they're wrong, it's simply that their perception is limited to just this type of wisdom. Now, the wisdom that you gain with experience is exactly what it sounds like. It's wisdom that you gain with experience. However, the thing is, people think that age and experience are directly correlated to one another. And in some cases, that may be true. However, a lot of people don't understand that it's not so much about how much experience you have, but rather it's about the type of experience that you have. This right here is why I am qualified through my experience to be giving advice to people. I'm qualified because I have a range of experiences that a lot of people never acquire in their entire lives, no matter how old they are or how long they live. There are a lot of people who will go through their whole entire lives, really most people. You can look this up for yourself. I don't have a statistic to back this up. Do your own research. Most people in this world will never be self-employed. Simply put, this is a fact. Most people in this world will never be self-employed. They've never had to file self-employment taxes. They don't know what self-employment entails. Therefore, they cannot provide their own perspective on it because they've never experienced it. At the age of 23, I've been self-employed for the majority of my adult life. As a matter of fact, I've made about four or five times as much money through self-employment as I have from W-2 income, which is employment income. I've been self-employed for the past few years, and that qualifies me to talk about how to be self-employed, not just the logistics of it, but the mindset behind it. Because in order for me to have done this at a young age, I must have had a unique mindset and a unique set of experiences, which led up to me having the insight that I have. In addition to being self-employed, I've also lived in a car for three months. A lot of people have never lived in a car for three months. A lot of people, most people have never done that before. That's not to say that no one has done that before. I'm sure there are plenty of people that have, but most people, especially in the normal societal world, based on the normal societal standard, have never experienced that before. And not just that, but going to a completely different state on the other side of the country to do so and being out there pretty much by themselves. Most people have never done that. I've experienced things that a lot of people have never experienced and will never experience. My parents have never experienced either one of those two things. My parents have never been fully self-employed. My parents have never lived in a car, even though they are twice my age, over twice my age actually. I have a set of experiences which makes me more qualified to speak on certain subjects than they are because I've experienced those things. And it's also worth noting that even though I haven't experienced everything in my 23 years on this earth, 
I'm a very observant person. What is my channel? Aside from me documenting my own experiences and insights based on my life, what is my channel? How was I able to post videos every single day with unique insights for years on end? The reason why I was able to do this is because what I like to do in my free time is go and acquire insights from people that I consider to be my internet mentors, if you will, and I find the common denominators between all of their insights. I pull from a wide range of different experiences which span multiple different lifetimes, be it through videos, through books, through courses, so on and so forth, and I source out the common denominators between all of these insights, and that's what I share on my channel. And then I also apply these insights into my life and share my findings based on my experiences. It is because of those insights, or rather the common denominators of those insights, that I've been able to be self-employed or that I decided to go live in a car for a few months, so on and so forth. Throughout my journey, I've been able to find the commonalities between different ideologies, different belief systems, and use those common denominators to create my own ideology and put it to the test in my own life. And I'm not saying that my word is the end all be all. It most certainly should not be. I encourage you to do exactly what I do. I encourage you to not only listen to what I have to say, but also to pull from a wide range of sources and find your own common denominators and apply them to your life as you see fit. Now, that being said, there is also another type of wisdom, a secret wisdom that a lot of people are not aware of. And that is the wisdom that you lose with experience. Yes, there is a wisdom that you lose with experience. Now, what does this wisdom entail? This wisdom is purity. It's the wisdom that you are born with. It's naivety, it's innocence, it's courage, it's the desire to be adventurous and to follow and conquer all of your dreams. It's you as a kid deciding that you want to explore the world, even if the only world that you have access to at that point in time is your neighborhood. That's the type of wisdom that we are all born with that we lose through experiences because oftentimes through experiences, to my point earlier, we develop beliefs, we develop ideologies, and although beliefs can be empowering, they can also be equally limiting. This is why if you ask a five-year-old what they want to do when they grow up, they'll tell you that they want to be an astronaut or they want to be a YouTuber or they want to be a singer or an actor, actress so on and so forth. They're not thinking in terms of what's realistic because they haven't yet developed the limiting perceptions of what realism is. And a common denominator that I've derived from these aforementioned ideologies is you have to be willing to unlearn a lot of the conditioning that you've been subjected to throughout your life. If you want to be successful by whatever metrics you establish as success. You have to be able to undo your conditioning, which oftentimes comes from your elders, okay? A lot of times this conditioning, this limiting conditioning, these agreements that you make come from your elders. They are passed down through generations. You have to be willing to unlearn those and replace them with empowering beliefs. But oftentimes the most empowering beliefs are the beliefs in no beliefs at all, right? And I'm not trying to twist your mind or anything. I'm not trying to confuse you. Basically, what I'm saying is that these two types of wisdom are intertwined. And when you find the intersection of these two types of wisdom, that's where you find the insight and the value that you have to provide in your life. And that's the type of value that can not only change other people's lives, but your life as well.